I want to look at a problem involving the coordinate geometry of the circle now before we finish for tonight. Next week I will look at four or five other problems because the circle questions certainly appear every year and probably at a greater level of difficulty than the coordinate geometry of the line circles. Now there are two ways you can write the equation of a circle. One is like as follows where you have center minus g minus f. In other words, every formula of a circle must have a single x squared term, a single y squared term, no cross term involving x and y, and the radius in this instance is the awkward looking g squared plus f squared minus c. Now, in general, that is the equation I run to when I'm in trouble in any problem involving the circle. But the problem that I've actually outlined there, the 2011 paper two question, probably is easier answered if you look at the alternative method for writing the equation of a circle. x minus h all squared plus y minus k all squared is equal to the radius squared. Why do they use h and k in this equation and g and f in this equation? God knows. Obviously the people who came up with the, the various formulae have just, you know, there were different rows between different factions of the mathematical world in the 1700s. But effectively in this case, the center is hk. And the best thing about this form of the equation is that the radius is just equal to r. So if you can find the center and find the radius quickly in any problem, this is almost certainly the easier equation to use. If you have three points, this is the equation you use. But if you actually have a means of finding the radius quickly, use this equation instead. So this problem here asks us to, uh, that we have a line, x plus 3y equals 20. And we have another circle, x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 8y equals zero. They tell us that this line intersects with this circle at two points and that those two points constitute the diameter of the circle we're looking for. So if we have the diameter, we have in effect the radius. The radius is equal to half the diameter. So I see a situation where the radius is going to pop out very nicely. We intersect this line with this circle, we'll get two points. Those two points form the radius. We find the length between those two points, that's the diameter. We find the radius by dividing the diameter by two. And how do we find the center of the circle? We know it's the middle. So if I have the diameter of a circle, and again, apologies, there is a world circle drawing competition, which I will clearly fail in. But if I know this point here, which I think is called Q, and I know this point here, the midpoint of those two points is the center of the circle, and half the diameter is equal to the radius. So that's the diameter across the entire circle, and the two radii are simply half the diameter itself. First of all, practice back to week one of what we were doing, intersecting a line with a circle. Let's dive in. x is equal to 20 minus 3y. Of course, we could have y equals 20 minus x all over 3. This is far easier. Substitute this into this. So we get 20 minus 3y all squared plus y squared minus 6 times 20 minus 3y plus 8y equals 0. This will give me a quadratic in y. I will get two roots for y. I will find two corresponding x values, and they will be my p and q values for the diameter of this new circle. So I promise that I am doing it correctly when I do this in one go. So please believe me when I say that's equal to 400 minus 120y plus 9y squared. If you must do it bracket times bracket, please do so, but don't be afraid if you've got the skill to multiply that in one go. Plus y squared minus 120 plus 18y. Um, I obviously 
uh, should have had a minus y from the very beginning there. So again, to show you this is live, we have a 18y minus 8y equals 0. And rearranging this equation, I get 10y squared, 10y squared minus 110y plus 280 equals 0. There's no need to be a masochist and trying to find awkward factors here. We can simply divide all the terms in this quadratic by 10 to give us an easier equation, y squared minus 11y plus 28 equals 0. I see factors screaming out at me here. We have y minus 4 times y minus 7 equals 0. That gives us y equals 4 or y equals 7. So now I have found the y coordinates of my two points here. And now I simply have to find the x coordinates. The x coordinates are, well, in the case of y equals 4, we have a situation where x is equal to 20 minus 3 times 4. So x is equal to 8. That point there is 8, 4. x coordinate, y coordinate. Always remember those simple things and don't get too lost. For y equals 7, we have x is equal to 20 minus 3 times 7, x is equal to 20 minus 21, x is equal to minus 1. Very exciting. So we have minus 1, uh, 7. So let me discard this initial guess of what the diagram looks like. And this is certainly a physical challenge to clean the board must be the strange concoction of ink I put inside it. So we have a situation where we know that one point is minus one seven. So minus one seven is one point. And the other point is eight four, somewhere about here. So we know this, these two points constitute the diameter of my circle. The circle will look something like this here going on into the ether above the board. Our circle looks like that. That there is uh, minus one seven. That there is eight four. And now to find the equation of that circle, we find first of all the midpoint of those two points. That's the easy bit. And then we find the distance between those two points. And we know that the radius is somewhere, the radius is half that distance. So, Let's move on now. So, the midpoint. Add the x's. Divide by 2. Add the y's. And divide by 2. So the midpoint, or the centre of this circle, is equal to uh, 7 over 2. 11 over 2. That's the centre of our circle. And now, similarly, now the distance between those two points, we have the radius is equal to a half Let's do it in one go. The diameter is the distance between this and this. The radius is half that. It's equal to a half times x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1. You get r is equal to a half minus 9 all squared plus 3 squared. The radius is equal to a half times the square root of 81 plus 9. So if you like, the radius is equal to root 90 over 2. Root 90 is root 9 times root 10. So 
So after all that, you see that the radius is equal to 3 root 10 over 2. And now we are ready to apply our formula x minus h all squared plus y minus k all squared equals the radius squared. So, we're ready to go. x minus h all squared plus y minus k all squared is equal to r squared. So h is 7 over 2. k is 11 over 2. And the radius squared is 3 root 10 all over 2 all squared. So let's put a bit of manners on this. x minus 7 over 2 all squared plus y minus 11 over 2 all squared. 3 squared is 9. Root 10 squared is 10. 9 times 10 is 90. So we get 90 over 4. And let's put it into a lovely form. We get multiply everything by 4. That's 4 times x minus 7 over 2 all squared plus 4 times y minus 11 over 2 all squared. That's equal to 90. And as a real flourish, let's just put in this 4 into the bracket itself. So let's make it 2x minus 7 all squared plus 2y minus 11 all squared equals to 90. See, 4 is 2 squared. So I can actually place it inside the bracket if I put it in as a 2 in effect. 4 outside the bracket, outside the square bracket, becomes 2 once inside. So the most beautiful formula you can produce would be 2x minus 7 all squared plus 2y minus 11 all squared equals to 90. So full marks were allocated for um, the uh, full marks were allocated for the answer up to here. Now, that comes to the end of our session here this evening. Please do try the multiple choice questions that are included at the end of the notes. You can answer those questions uh, in the usual way uh, using the Online Grinds website, but the actual questions themselves are in the end of the notes that I've handed out. And I appreciate that tonight maybe the material was relatively straightforward and the questions weren't coming freely, but these sessions work best if you actually add to the interactivity of what's going on and ask as many questions as you can and if possible to ask those questions when you actually have an issue during the uh, actual session itself. You can also of course give any uh, feedback or questions you have onto the Online Grides Maths Forum where I'll be able to answer your questions and perhaps bring them up in next week's session or answer you individually. And next week we will be looking at the coordinate geometry of the circle exclusively. Always remember in any circle question there are three things you have to know. In this form of the equation, we need to know h, k, and r. In the other form of the equation, we need to know f, g, and c. So in every circle question, there are hidden three pieces of information that we can then ask, that we can then somehow work out to find the equation of our circle. So I hope you found tonight's session worthwhile. I'll be back next week to look at uh, I'll be back next week to look at uh, more exclusively the quarter time of the circle. I'm going to look forward to seeing you next week. Till then, good night.